is gaining a reputation as someone who is so, so difficult to beat. Haile Selassie on the inside, fifth in Tokyo last year, national record holder for Eritrea. Now to Albert Carney. Bronze in Doha, silver in London. Can he complete the collection here and become the first non-Kenyan to hold the Olympic and World titles at the same time? Bahadi of France, European Team Championship silver last year. And Cessler Scabruto, the former Olympic champion, the reigning world champion, who outdipped Lamacha Gurma by a hundredth of a second in Doha three years ago. It was one of the greatest races we've seen. What about the Ethiopian? Three times this season, he's gone inside eight minutes. Silver behind Kipruto in Doha. Silver behind El Bacali in Tokyo. Is it his turn for gold? Samir India, national record this year. Unheard of for an Indian to run that fast. 8.12. Abraham Kibiwot of Kenya. Commonwealth silver four years ago. Second in the road Diamond League in 8.06. He's in form this season. So too is Genet Wali. Just off the podium in Tokyo and Doha. And he's a fine 5,000 meter run. He's got brilliant, brilliant speed endurance. Arce of Spain. Amare, African champion double in Mauritius over the five in the steeplechase. He's run 8.06 this season. Abdel Wahid of Italy, European under 23 silver in 2017. Martos of Spain, a European finalist. To Hilary Bohr, the former Kenyan proudly flying the flag for the United States. In the top eight in Rio, in the top eight in Doha, and the national champion for the United States. A world youth champion, a world youth silver, Leonard Best from the second from the outside for Kenya. And then Evan Yeager with a slightly different haircut. This is Yeager Mark II, a torrid time with injuries. The silver medalist from Rio and the bronze medalist from London, delighted to be back in form, fit and healthy, and in the final. El Bacali will be the favourite for this one. But if he wins, he might be pushed, quite literally, every step of the way. Don't take your eyes off this final for a second, the 3,000 speed chase. I have never heard noise like it on the last 500 metres of the men's 10,000 final. This is a crowd that absolutely loves its distance running, and they will be enthralled here, not specifically about Hillary Moore, but because they know, Dale Divas, in this race, we are watching the best of the best of the best. The reigning Olympic champion, the former Olympic champion, the man who's finished second on both occasions. Uh, Cameraman stuck out on the uh, track there, now just getting out of the way, that's why the field split, but he now moves back on the inside, and he won't be making that mistake when they come round at the next time of asking. No, no, Burma has the two silver, so I think that's his motivation to stay. i got to get up there for the last 500 metres, I've got to be in contention. And then Wale has that flat speed, so we'll see what happens coming around. It's like very, up there. yeah, it, that is really good to see him back in the train. He said, making the US team. They more to him, more to him than the Olympic silver because he never thought he'd get back to that level. Martos is leading. It's very tactical in the early stages of this steeplechase. We will come back to this soon, but we've got to get back to the field temporarily. Martos leading, Jaeger second, Kibuto third. Barship going for 2.35. Oh, so good. It is going to take something phenomenal to stop him securing a hat-trick on high jump titles. First time clearances are 24, 27, 30, 33 and 35. He's miles in front at the moment, the first man over. This is what I love about athletic scale. We have to keep dipping in and out here and there. Everywhere you look, we are watching the very, very best in the world at the peak of their powers. Now, this race is beginning to play into the hands of Sufayn El Bikali. The tall figure from Morocco is the Olympic champion, and he has run an eye trick 3.31 for the 1,500 metres. You can pour it on from the start, and he'll live with the pace. You can go slow, and he will be the one to wind it up over the last two laps. Everyone who's anyone is right there, tracking Martos as... Wale just runs wide on the outside, not to take the lead, but just so that he got a clean look at the water jump. You wonder if somebody's going to actually say, okay, I'm going to open it up, or are they going to wait to the finish? And, but like you said, no matter where they are in the race, Bacali figures out, I know how to get this done. 2.57 for that first kilometre. By their standards, this is slow. Somebody needs to grab this race by the scruff of the neck. Gurma leads. He has been so close to tasting glory on so many occasions, but now Conceslas Kipruto comes to the front. This is a guy who's won it all, a world youth champion, a world junior champion. He's the reigning world champion and won the first of his two world titles in London five years ago. Car crash at the end of 2018. He's had all sorts going on in his life off the track, but he looks like he's approaching, approaching his best form, tucked in on the inside. He looked really comfortable. He was exchanging words in Swahili with Henry Ball at the end of the semi-finals or heats or whatever you want to call them and they're talking to each other again now on the inside behind Lamech behind Lamech and Gurma and still no move from Sufayn El Bacali who is buried in the middle of the pack as Baladi of France now comes up to try and turn this into a bit of an honest pace and Conceslas Kipruto has gone to the front but he hasn't gone to the front to turn it on he's just making sure he gets a clean look at the barrier and the longer it stays like this the likelier it is that we're going to see a massive burn up from El Bacali who is just in the middle of the pack to the left of Evan Jager it's very tight that last 500 metres when we get there is going to be something epic Kibuto is still in the front. Kibuto's coming back. While he's deciding that he's going to take it, Kibuto's in the front, so you can say clear of the water jump. Exchanging a bit of words with Bore. 
And here comes Martos on the outside. They're pushing and shoving, a little bit of elbowing. Coming round now with three laps to go. Woo! Second attempt, 235. Barsky's got clean at the first time of Barsky. Oh, wow! What a final in prospect. What a climax we're going to have. He's still dancing. Now we're back with the steeplechase. Two and a half laps to go. Martos hitting the front. Tapping the back there from Mulhardy. This is always the danger when it gets tight towards the end. We don't want to see any fallers here. What an end to this race in prospect. Does it begin to play into the hands of Sufayn El Bacardi? I think it does, but who else could launch a mammoth sprint here? Is anyone going to go with half a mile remaining? I promise you we're in for an epic climax here. Nobody's been prepared to commit just yet. When will the big move come? And who will it be? Bacardi is almost running wide into lane three. And he needs to get slightly closer to the front because, oh, there's a forward there. That's always going to happen when it's so tight. El Bacardi needs to pay close attention here because if somebody suddenly bursts, they get the edge. If you go first and get five metres and then you both run at exactly the same speed to the end, that early acceleration can make the difference. And it was Beck, the world junior silver medalist, who fell. Such a shame for him. Wale has a little look across. And Miley Selassie is there. The rule and four keep nudging at each other. Miley Selassie leading. Now Sufayn Elbacardi coming up towards the shoulder of Concessus Capruto, who is the reigning champion. They take the bell in the final of the men's 3,000 metre steeplechase. It's been ever so cagey all the way through. Wale and Amare, no move yet from Gerber. The two outstanding performers this season had a little bit to do. What a story this will be for Haile Selassie. He was fifth in Tokyo. Amare tried to come through on the inside and he manages this somehow. Wale leaves. Concessus Capruto coming up on the outside. And another faller. It was Murray, I feel. Gerber coming up onto Elbacardi's shoulder. But El Bacardi floats across the front. Now comes the acceleration. Kipruto is the defending champion. Gurma, silver in Doha. Silver in Tokyo. Can he somehow wrestle the gold away from Bacardi? No, he can't. El Bacardi becomes the first non-Kenyan to hold the world title as well as the Olympic title. And a silver goes to Gurma once again. And Concessus Kipruto makes it yet another medal. Coming back to form. He's on the podium with the bronze. But that race played into the hands of the Moroccan. The longer they left it, the better his chances of burning them up. And he did so. And in the end, he had room to spare. What a victory. And what a performance from Sufayn El Bacali. The winning habit from Tokyo has followed him here to Eugene. <laughs> There's another dancer for you. How do you beat a man who can run 331 for 1500 meters with a beautiful hurdling technique? And we had two fallers in that race. It was bound to happen because it was so, so slow and bunched. Sufayn El Bacardi will embark on a lap of honour. What's he doing now? Here we go. OK, flag over the legs. OK, yeah, right, yeah, I like that. Yeah, playing, the, playing the air guitar. When well, you're the champion, you can do what you like. Yeah. I hope Gerber is pleased with that effort. I mean, what's he got to do to win a gold? It's yet another brilliant performance from him. But you get the feeling with him, he's got to go early. 